Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? It is Friday. Oh, my God. We got through a week, through a whole the entire week. We made it to Friday. Y'all know what that means. It's anime and chill podcast time, everybody. And today, Abby, from your Nick of the Woods, we got a special guest. Abby, why don't you drop the name of our special guest? Absolutely. I am so excited to sit down and chill tonight with none other than John Gremion. You may know him from My Hero Academia as Gentle Criminal. You may know him as Mihawk from One Piece, and he has this super long list of credits. So I'm really excited to chat with him again. I had the pleasure of meeting him at Anime Fan Weekend, and I got to hear super cool stories then. So I'm really excited to bring this guest to all of you tonight. Oh, yeah. So Anime Universe. Sit back, relax, chill with us tonight. Today's tonight's gonna be a special episode, so let's get it going. Let's go. go there we go look at our special guest Let's hello go. hello <laughs> yeah, I'm still that music. That was isn't it fun <laughs> so did you uh did, did gamer did you um did you do all the video editing on that and the graphics or is that you yes that was me <laughs> oh you're a pro okay i'm a video editor and you're like giving me my money this is like, oh. and, and the flyer you guys made for this by the way i mean i, I said like, we don't have to do an interview just do the flyer we're done That's <laughs> Uh, I feel special. I got a certified stamp from John. Yes, I'm taking that to the bank. Let's go. He just made his night. I yes, always sir. tell him. Good. Good. Oh, that's good stuff, man. You got some skills. How long you been doing that? Uh, honest, to be honest with you, um, I've had like just that creative bug, I guess, like all through high school. So, um, wow. you know, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. So. Wow. Well, I've been a video editor for as long as I've been a voice actor for about 25 years. It's been my bread and butter <laughs> on the other end of the scale. And yeah, that's that's real, that's way cool. That's oh, cool. <laughs> it's always super fun. Like, really I'm awesome. always yeah. bobbing behind. I can't. If there was a compilation no, of no, all the times no, I was no, dancing no, behind no. the scene, it would be really <laughs> funny. So thank you so much for the compliment on that. It's yes. like, you just made our evening. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm clipping <laughs> that. I'm throwing that everywhere. I'm clipping that and throwing it everywhere. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, thank well, John, you. feel free to introduce yourself to our audience. Tell us a little bit about you and your voice Hi, acting audience. experience. How is everybody? I'm John Grimion. I'm an anime voice actor and video editor in Houston, Texas. I've been freelance for, a, for, for as long as I can remember, and I'm never going back. And um, <laughs> But uh, I've been recording anime since the late 90s when it was coming out on VHS. So, yes, I'm, I'm that old, and, and uh, it's been super fun. I started... Um, I started recording anime back in the day when um, the studio that's now called Sentai used to be called ADV Films. And in the mid 90s, they got started around maybe 96, 97, I think. And they were happy if they were doing two titles a month or something like that. And it, anime was just like kind of the nerd back in the corner of the party, right? And it wasn't yes. anything like it is today at all. And uh, th eventually they in 97, 98, they said, we're getting more titles. We're getting more licensing. Things are kind of starting to blow up. We need more actors. So they didn't have enough actors. And they, so they just started putting out want, you know, help wanted ads in the newspaper every couple of months in the Houston press and the back of the page. We used to see some of us uh, saw 
come audition for you know, ADV films to record some anime, American dubbed anime. And we went, you mean like Speed Racer? You mean that kind of stuff? Cool. We'll do, we'll go do cartoons. We'll do that. That'd be, that'd be a good job. And so friends of mine heard about it. They told me about it. And I'm a, I've been a stage kid since, you know, I was a stage kid and I've done theater forever. So, and I've done voices and impressions and I was the, you know, getting in trouble because I used to imitate my teachers and all that stuff. <laughs> so we went to one of these auditions and we're all sitting in a room, just like you're auditioning for a commercial and they call you in one by one. And I met Matt Greenfield, the, the main director, producer, everybody knows Matt from, he's one of the creators of ADV along with John Ledford. And he, you know, gave me an audition and we, you look at the screen and match the flaps and we did our thing and some of us got called back. And so they started to slowly grow a bigger, bigger pool of actors. And I know we'll talk later about how things have changed from then to now, but yeah, that was how it started. That's how I got started. Nice. That is off, so cool. I love that. Off the newspaper. And I love, right. Off what? the newspaper. <laughs> That's so if only it was that simple to find a job these Today, days. You know, just go back to the newspaper. The <laughs> yeah, I was a surprise. I was like, okay, cool. I mean, if my friends hadn't told me about it, you know, who knows? But a couple of friends told me about it and that's how we all went. We all went and auditioned and, um, I was married at the time. My wife and I both auditioned and she's a, nice. she's a she was an opera singer and a voice coach. And so, oh, you know, wow. we, we got really well. so, so, uh, she, I don't think she got any, any, uh, roles in that, in that round or anything like that, but we both went to audition and I just started doing it, uh, after that. So I started playing it. first big show I did was bubblegum crisis 2040. And I played Nigel in that and Nigel Kirkland, he, uh, with all the light, what were they called? The lightsabers? The not the lightsabers, the night sabers. Lightsabers. Oh, okay. A group of women who were called the night sabers, and they were uh and like I think it was Lucy Christian and Monica Rial, and and uh, I'm not if I'm if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, and oh gosh, who were the other? I'm dropping names. Um, but Jason Douglas was in it, and he's still, you know, he's blown up all over the place, and and he's now doing Chainsaw Man, and he was in The Walking Dead, and you know, uh, Breaking Bad, and all these other great shows. Oh, he was in that show, um, a lot of um, John Swayze, Jay Hickman, all these really cool actors that I knew back in the day. They all started way back when I started. Very cool. Like from the ground up, y'all have been going. That is so nice. Yes. Neat. We had no idea it was going to blow up like it did. Right. And yeah. that's good for you for sticking through it because uh, I just want to know, like, looking through your IMDb, it is just character after character after character yes. after character. So you have quite literally seen the evolution from start to now. And I admire that because when I was growing up, anime was, first of all, not very popular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned this at Anime Fan Week, and it is such mm -hmm. a silly story when you're matching the flaps, how it used to be Speed Racer, how there would be so many words and their mouth would only move so many <laughs> times. That's right. That's right. That yeah. just makes me giggle to go like, wow, it's really gone from A to Z really quickly. Yeah, yeah. we used to notice that the translations were so different. And when they did, I think I think the story, if I'm correct, if I, I think if the story goes right, they, they when you translate from Japanese to English, there's so many more words that you have to fit in on some of these sentences. So even if we're using the same words, we're using words in ways that that we that they don't use them. You know what I'm talking about? There's right. idiomatic differences. And so, yeah, I used to watch Pops on Speed Race go, Speed, I saw the build my car, my bare hands, I'm not going to drive it in the race, that's final. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, right. <laughs> la, 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 la. And, and these two or three flaps have these words coming out at you, you know? And it was kind of crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Lots Definitely. of nostalgia in that. Right? I love it. Just, <laughs> yes, because if you really look at anime then and now, it's like the voice that that just just the voices, but the 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 gestures from the mouth, the oh, expressions, yeah. everything. You it, so it is like so much better now. But uh, we didn't know that. any better then. Watching what we were watching, we we're just at all of what we were watching, and and yeah, we we weren't as popular as it is right now right now yeah. so yeah. definitely that's crazy yeah. I'm gonna move my, speaking of i'm gonna move my mic a little closer in case you, you can hear me pretty good yeah oh, oh yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, all good. good all good all good yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah people uh people know me best from uh from my hero when i play gentle criminal in, in season four of my hero and and uh that and hawkeye mihawk are probably from one piece are probably the two uh roles i'm best known for I've also done uh, Chef Chappelle in Food Wars. People, he was a, the French Gordon Ramsay in Food Wars in season one. Um, 
let's see, Vampire Hunter D, when we redid the dub of Vampire Hunter D, ADV, Sentai uh, did a, a redub of the original movie from 1985, and they put it on Blu-ray, and they wanted a whole new stereo 5.1 you know, track, and so they got a whole new cast, and they, redid, they redubbed it, and I played D. And um, let's see, Arthur Randall and Black Butler is another one that I'm known for. Um, but I've done some other shows that people, you know, I don't think people will really think about, but, but when they hear about them, they're like, oh, I didn't know you did that. I mean, we, we all, I, I played some smaller roles in Full Metal Alchemist and Full Malchus Brotherhood at, and, and uh, Trinity Blood at Funimation and uh, let's see, Basilisk. Um, I did Darker Than Black and Dean Angel for ADV. We did Princess Nine, which was a really cool show, and Peacemaker, a lot of old school stuff that people recognize. Panty and Stocking. I, I literally had like three lines. <laughs> wow. Love that one. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Well, this is this is very this is, the thing. this is what happens. I was at a I was at a convention one time and I said, you know, I think my demo reel is, you know, I may need to redo my demo reel. I'm not sure, but I, I don't know. I'll, I'll talk to people about it. So I was telling people at a panel what roles I've done, and they went, Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. And then I said, Oh, and I was in panty and stocking. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I had literally three lines. Three lines. That's enough. Um, that is enough. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So. Well, you also have credits for Attack on Titan and my personal favorite, Hello Kitty. I love those. Oh, those are God. great. Yeah, that's right. That's right. There's been quite a range. I've been, yeah, Hello Kitty was fantastic. Hard worker. <laughs> no, some some dad cat in. Uh, in <laughs> I'm always playing the dad. I mean, I've got a deeper voice, right? So I don't oh, dad voice all the way. Somebody That's has a, to do it. Yeah, everybody has to be. Do it, right? so, so, yeah, I don't. I don't play the. I don't play. There's too many actors out there who have the natural, higher sounding voice, and I could try to sound like a little guy like that, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I did a role in uh, Log Horizon, and Log Horizon, I had a higher voice. They sounded kind of like younger, and I did that. It was fine, and it worked. But there's too many actors out there who are naturally just younger, higher pitch, and they're just get, they're going to play the teenagers who are saving the world. And I'm I'm the evil guy who runs the corporation. I play like <laughs> 57 of those dudes. But you have to kill three times after they shape shift at the end of the last shape shift. <laughs> become a big you know transformer and go. And then you, <laughs> yeah, and you got to kill them three times. And, um, what else? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, oh, you know what? I could show you my demo reel. I could share it with you if you want to see it. I can show that to you real quick. Yeah, oh, sure. definitely. It's Everybody, y'all really gonna want to check this out. It'll have some other, it'll have some other things here. Let me see if I can do this. Boop. Is that showing up? Give it a second. There, there we is. go. Okay. We are good to go. On. Here we go. My dearest viewers, I believe it's time to give you a taste of my hijinks. Try not to be so dazzled that you avert your eyes as your favorite scoundrel shows off his talents. Gentle criminal at your service. My quirk is elasticity. I bestow said property to anything I touch. And I do mean anything, even the air itself. Gently rebound! <laughs> what is your quirk? Or what do you wish to gain power? Tell me, Rick Warner. You're certainly ferocious, I'll give you that. The moment you step foot in the kitchen, you're responsible for producing extraordinary food. Any dish that is not an A will be viewed as an E. And that, my friends, is a failure. I may not respect your sorcery, but that doesn't stop me from learning it. For a man first in atomic equations, a few circles were easy enough to understand. Your arcane rules mean nothing to me. I'm a man of science! Go back to your master and tell him this. You are but transient guests on this planet, fated to return to the darkness. Ah, oh, come now on! You ought to be ashamed, all of yourselves! <laughs> you look like a bunch of little girls! <laughs> <laughs> I know the credibility of this threat is questionable at best, but maniac guerrilla groups cannot be measured by the yardstick of common sense. We will carry out the mission at the request of the Peruvian government. Is that understood? We at Scotland Yard are more than capable of handling this case, I assure you. But no need for you to interfere. This makes 20 victims so far. And you still haven't caught this criminal? It pains my soul! <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. Let it out, my little pucks. 
My wish that you live your life freely from this point forward. And now, dear viewers, I must say cheerio until next time. Gentle video. See you next time. Oh, love it. Oh, my so God. So many fun characters. Yes. yes. Oh, my God. So yeah, we threw some. You, you could tell that some of those were very old school because they were four by three with little VHS lines on the bottom. And that's where <laughs> I had to literally go get the VHS tapes and like like transfer them onto because we used to get our anime on VHS. Yes, yeah. I remember that, John. Mm. Uh, my son is on the chat. Yes. He is one of the biggest One Piece fans now. Um. It would mean the world to him if yes. you can give him a shout out yes. <laughs> in character. If of you can course. please do that. His of name course. is Michael. Michael. All right. <clears throat> Hello, Michael. It is I, John Grimion, the voice of Hawkeye Mihawk. And I am telling you now to become your strongest and surpass me. You have to. How about that? Oh, That's my so God. <laughs> Hey. There yeah, you go. There you go, my Michael, guy. <laughs> you, you, you got the encouragement right there from John himself. There you go. You do that. He's a, and honestly, he's he's about to, uh, you know, got one more year of high school. He's about to graduate. So that right there, man, he, he can listen to that over and over. I appreciate that. Thank Aww. you. Oh, that's awesome. That's Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Oh, Look at him. He's so happy. <laughs> Best day ever. <laughs> yeah, we're, gonna to, we're gonna have to send Michael a, a picture, man. We're gonna have to send Michael. Okay, so you got your choice because I got these out of the. I bring oh, these prints. I bring these prints Michael, to, uh, I bring these prints to cons. So we have two for Mihawk. We have one daytime action here, right, with the sword, and then we have nighttime chill. So you decide wow. between daytime. Michael, and what? Daytime oh, chill. look at that! He's giving you a we'll choice. Ship it over to you. We'll ship it to you. There so, we. Yeah, we'll, we'll sign it and get it in the mail. Ooh. Very cool. That is so yeah. kind of you. Thank you so oh, much. Thank oh, you. Cool. No problem, man. Well, we're, we're, we are nothing without people who watch anime. I'll, I'll tell you that. That is true. That is the whole point of our show. We love sharing yep. it with everyone. We love chatting about it. Uh, just spreading the peace, love, and everything that goes along with it. Um, so one thing, I wanted to start getting into some of these questions. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I am just so astonished by all of the different characters that you were able to play. Mm. So what steps do you take to prepare for a role or find some character inspiration? Well, it's really interesting, but um, most of the time, most of the time, uh, this happened all the time, no matter what the show was, when I was at ADV originally in the, in the late 90s up to maybe mm. mid-2000s or whatever, getting into Funimation, et cetera was that you never knew what you were going to do until you were in the studio because I wasn't a big anime fan back then. I was just doing it. It was, it was a job. It was great. I started getting more and more into it as time went, time went on, <clears throat> excuse me. And so usually it was just a matter of, you didn't even audition for the roles. Like the directors knew what your voice type was and they just said, well, this is a John Grimion role. So let's get him in here. And can he do an accent? Is this deeper? Is this whatever? Usually it's, usually it's just a variation of your own voice. It's either a little gruff or a little higher or a little something, or unless there's a wacky accent or something like that. I've done a lot of those. So that you come into the studio, you get a phone call. Hey, come in for this show. You don't know what the show is. You've never seen it. And especially the, the further back you go, the harder it was to get a hold of a sub of those shows because they were on VHS. There were uh, four episodes per tape and you either got the sub or the dub. And eventually when it's on DVD, it's everything's on the DVD. And that made it, that was a huge progression up. But you'd go into the studio and you would just have the director tell you what was going on. And it was a little bit like almost like an improv exercise. You'd go in and say, hey, here's what the guy looks like. Here's what the Japanese actor sounds like. Let's watch the scene. Let's talk about it a little bit. And then we'd come up with a voice. So you work with the director to come up with one. 
that's usually how it happens. That's okay. almost always how it would happen with me. And I think a lot of other actors would, uh, voice actors would tell you the same thing. Um, <clears throat> these days with simul dubs, you go, you don't know what episodes you're going to be in yet. Right. So back in the day, it was the whole show has been done. It's never had an English dub yet. All the episodes are out. We're going to do the entire show. So you've got a total of this many episodes for your character. So you do it all at once in like a three hour block or a two hour or two, four hour sessions or whatever they hauled you in for. But the lead characters, of course, would have to book several hours because they were doing all the episodes, right? They were the lead. So the, it depends on the size of the role. But now you go in and you don't know if you're going to be in next week's episode because it hasn't even run in Japan yet. So wow. Right, right, now, right now I'm recording a show called Buddy Daddies at Crunchyroll. And Buddy, oh, you're a fan. So, <laughs> I haven't so, seen it yet. It is okay. on my watch list and I'm very, <laughs> very excited cool. for it. Very cool, very cool show. I enjoy it. I've been watching it too on Crunchyroll to keep up. But see, you can watch the shows now. I can watch the I can watch the episode I'm gonna do to see what I need to do next week when I go into the studio. But you don't know you're gonna be in the studio in, even in the episode until maybe two weeks out. So Got we're it. driving, we're going back and forth to Crunchyroll right now to record Buddy Daddies. I'm going to go back on, well, I go back on Sunday and and uh, uh, to sleep over. And then I'm going to um, stay over overnight, record Monday for some other stuff that we can't talk about right now. But it's, um, but Buddy Daddies episode is coming up soon. And so they just say, hey, you're in this episode now. And you on the so you can come up with a character maybe a little earlier before oh that's what my character looks like that's what he sounds like you can read the subs in, the night before learn the lines be a little more prepared when you go in and it didn't used to be like that um so it's it, it's cool that we can do that but a, an interesting story especially about mihawk speaking of mihawk is that there were other studios recording one piece right four kids did a version and there were different versions and there's actually videos that compare our voices out there on youtube i think and one guy did him as a Frenchman. And I don't think he's a Frenchman, but another guy did him a different way. And then when I went into record him in 2007, it's been that long. It's been that long a show. And Mike McFarlane called me and I didn't have an audition. He said, I want you to play this character. I said, great. So I'd been at Funimation for a little while and he's done a few jobs with him. And he said, play this character. And I walked in, I saw him and I thought, hmm, I don't think I want to do him as like a Spaniard, like a Nico Montoya or anything like that. But I wanted, what do we do with this guy? What, you know, and I had just seen a Harry Potter movie. And so I thought of Alan Rickman and I can't really do a Snape impression very well, but you know, you think of that deep British voice that's very, and then, <laughs> I, take, and then I take away the British and I keep it in my nose kind of sly, like a snake. And that's me. <laughs> so I just kind of, we just kind of found it that way. And I said, what that's about so that? He goes, cool. that's good. Try it. So we, so he liked it and we, and that's his voice now. Have you ever had a moment where you just you come up with a voice and you're like, okay, this is totally going to be it, and then you start reading your lines and the director says, I don't know what you're doing, but stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually you don't get past the first couple of lines without the director saying, ah, let's try something different. Right. Something else, something like else. And so, or sometimes, sometimes what happens is you'll start down the road, you'll get into the studio, you'll start recording a few lines, and then 30 minutes into the session, you really get into the zone and into the character, and it settles into a certain place. And then you need to go back at the end of the session and make sure that the first few lines sounded oh, like that. Okay. And sometimes you've gone back and redone them because after you get in the zone, they go, you know what, let's go back and check and make sure. And it's a little different. So, you know, you start in a certain way and then you kind of start to get into it. So it's right. Like, once you warm up a little. Zone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. That's good. That's good. So speaking good. of getting in the zone, as far as all these voices, characters you've yeah. done, Mm -hmm. what's been what's been the most challenging one and why what's what's been that one where it's just like oh i don't i can't get it or is well, you know what's weird is every now and then there's a voice that you hear in your head that you can't quite make your voice do you see the character and you kind of go i bet he sounds like this and then you try to do it and you're not quite there that's happened a couple of times but you get close enough but the most challenging stuff is the stuff that that hurts your throat really you know the 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 stuff that I've, I've done a couple of voices where, Hey, I'll, I'll play this guy like this. It'll be great. And, and then you do it after a while and then you have to yell and you have too many fight scenes. And you're like, Oh my God, why did I change that? <laughs> and then you're kind of stuck. You, you better get it through. And so, you get uh, through. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep going. You gotta keep plugging away. That one voice I just did was for a character named Yotaka Takanuchi. And he was in my favorite comedy anime called uh, Cromarty high school. 
and we had to keep rescheduling the sessions because we couldn't get through them because we were laughing so hard. <laughs> what <laughs> a good we memory. Were, right? Okay, so the story I tell the story I tell everybody, and then I tell it a lot of times. I probably told it at Anime Pass, uh, at, not Anime Pasadena. Um, yeah, we were we were Anime Fan Weekend. Anime Fan Weekend, weekend in anime Pasadena. Fan, in Pasadena. <laughs> so um, we recorded this this character gets car sick a lot. You know, he's the school bully. He's a ball, he's nothing like <laughs> It's great because you never have to look like the character. You never have to feel like the character. You just have to sound like the character. That's the best one of the best things about the job. So I walk in and he's a bald guy, big old dude, and he's tough. And I'm not a bully. I mean, I was bullied in school. So, I mean, I was, I was he's, like, he's nothing like me. But I give him that voice. I give him that kind of rough guy voice like that. And so <clears throat> he he's he can't tell the other kids that he gets car sick because he, think he thinks they'll make fun of him. So he's on a school bus and he's taking a bus trip going, oh my God, I think I'm going to be sick. And so in one episode, <laughs> he turned like this and he goes, I think I'm going to be sick. And the animation showed him scrunching his face and I just went, out of, out of the blue just to do it. And the director started laughing so hard he couldn't stop laughing. I said, stop laughing. He says, no, I can't. So I, said, so I tried to make myself not laugh and I started, so I started thinking about things that were gross. Or, or sad or awful. So I started going, okay, dead puppies. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so, so check this out. He goes, what? And I said, he said, say that. And I said, you, you want me to say what I just said as the character? He said, yeah, say it. I went, what is that? What is that going to do? It's going to make him sicker. What do you, that doesn't make any sense. He said, just do it. Just do it. And I said, dead puppies and ugly nuns. And if you watch episode three of Cromartie High School, let's he go. Punches his face, you hear that puppy's not much really fast. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense at all, but it's in the anime in the third episode. Oh, I, we have to go. We have to go see that, Abby. We got to go check the clip. Wanna, let's go. I, let's go. Yeah. I keep I subtitles had, I on I for. Saved, I would share it with you, but you know, right. I keep subtitles on for everything, right? So I'm yeah. so curious oh. to know if, whatever, if it comes if it out, pops up, whatever. one word is it all one? It sounds like one. It sounds like one little word. That's so silly. <laughs> oh, God, it's awful. So then he's like in the back of a cab. And he's trying to find the school, the other, the other uh, rival schools, so they can go kick their butts. And his friends keep handing him the wrong map, and they hand him a world map. And he's going, "Okay, we got to go down to the Arabian Peninsula, and we got to." And I and I could not get through the line. We were laughing so hard, so we had to reschedule me to come in like a few days later to record the rest of the line. <laughs> Oh my so, god. It was totally for, stupid. For them to reschedule everything, yes. It was a non-stop just LOL through the whole yeah, session. Big time. Big time. Yeah. I <laughs> love that. I good memories. Good memories, know, it's right? Great, it's great. <laughs> so all this time you've been doing anime voice acting. You know, we've mentioned a few times already that it has gone from a to Z, totally different. So mm. in your opinion, how has it changed? You know, what are the, some of the first things in your brain that you think of with all the changes that have been made for anime? What are some things that really stick out to you? The ways that it's changed over time. The help, well, the, the fact that it's gotten so much more mainstream and so incredibly popular and a long time ago, there were maybe two conventions going on a month and they were in a gymnasium or in the lobby of a, of a, yes. a, a, right. a, a movie theater or something, literally. <clears throat> and I think, um, that's that's huge and then um you know conventions have changed entirely now there's like five or six of them every weekend somewhere and literally and 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 that's amazing and and i love the fact that um there's more of that for the for the fans because that's a huge socialization thing for them that's really important for them it's fun it's it's like a woodstock of the mind it's like really cool when they go to so it's really it's it's really cool that that's happened but what I don't like about it is that a long time ago when you were doing this, when you got the job, you didn't know that this thing was popular or going to become popular or anything. And that took a lot of the, that, so there was very little pressure on you to think, oh, I've got to do a great job on this. But if you get cast in My Hero Academia right now, you're thinking, I better bring this because everybody's going to see this. Everybody's talking about it. It's the number oh, yeah. one Marvel movie of animes or something. So when I, when I heard about My Hero, I remember thinking about it in a whole different way than I normally used to think about other anime auditions. I auditioned for it. I, I actually emailed uh, Colleen, the director, Colleen Klinkenbeard, incredible voice actress. She plays Monkey D. Luffy in One Piece, of, of to name of to name one. That's that's enough. Right, <laughs> right. Yes. Rosa in, in my hero, and she's done some incredible acting 
in anime. Um, and she's a great director. And so she directed me in Black Butler a long time ago. And so, uh, but I hadn't seen her in years and I hadn't been to Funimation's offices in years. And so I wrote her an email and I said, hey, listen, I, I hear this show is great. Uh, I hear it's got new characters coming up all the time. I want to throw my name in the hat for what it's worth. If you think there's a, a role I might be good for, you know, send me an audition. That'd be great. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll throw that up. So she sent me uh, sides for Gentle Criminal. And I and I looked at it and I said, this guy's got to be British. He's he's got a, he's got the mustache and the T. And come on, let's do it. And she said, I want you to audition British and American. I was like, oh, please, British. And so she agreed eventually British. I was really happy about that. But when I auditioned for it, I was just in a week. I hadn't heard anything, and I was pacing. When <laughs> am I going to hear about this? But it was so important to me, and that's never that had never happened before. It, these these shows have become. It was like waiting for the high school musical cast to be post when you were in right school. and so it was it was that's a huge difference you you really care a lot more about getting the role about landing it i think it puts and that's good and bad because the pressure that it puts on you is unnecessary right i mean it's it's not good for your for your acting to worry too much about how people are going to write about it on twitter or comment about it everywhere on all these message boards and everything like that you just can't think about that stuff Right. You just got to right. go in because you, you just got to go in there, enjoy yourself and have fun and really. Enjoy Absolutely. So that's I wholeheartedly that's agree. It's much more competitive environment. Um, uh, there's so many more people who want to be anime voice actors now than ever before. Uh, so it's a it's a really, you know, it's a desirable field for people to get into. And that's changed dramatically. I mean, night and day since since I started recording. Wow. Yeah. I bet. I bet just the process of everything. And speaking of the process, uh, tell us about the recording process during post, all that. Like, how is all that for you on on the voice acting side? Well, you know, all we do is we go in the studio and we <clears throat> we we do our thing. And what's interesting about it from a technical point of view is that it's not like any other acting you ever do, right? When you do a stage play, you get the script in advance, you learn it, you learn the lines, you talk to the director about your character, you develop a character, you have table reads with the rest of the cast, you perform in previews before an audience, you get you find out which lines work, you find out how to tweak the role. If you didn't get it right on Friday night, you can work on it for Saturday's show or Sunday's matinee. You can keep perfecting the role if you're a stage actor. Anime is such a different ball game because you walk in and you better nail it because that's what's going on the Blu-ray or on Netflix or Hulu or wherever it runs. And that's what everybody's going to talk about. And if you're having a bad day and you're not really into it, it might show and you might go, man, I could have done a better job. Or you see it later and you go, man. So that's tougher. Um, but And also some people say, well, isn't voice acting just a lot easier than stage acting and any other acting because you're you're just you're just providing one layer right everything else is done for you except the voice you don't have to look like the character you don't have to to feel like them you don't have to have that stature you know thank goodness you have to have everything <laughs> look if i was if, if you held, if you had me mihawk sword i'd fall over and I'd get out of so right so you just have to go in and provide the voice what's really fun what's really fun about that is that people say well isn't it weird just going in by yourself to not work with other actors, to not be with anybody else, but just you in a booth. Well, you're not just alone with you. you you're you looking at a finished anime product and you're acting off of that. So you might not be bouncing off another actor. You might not be working with another actor physically on stage or something or with the energy of an audience, but you've got this entire world created for you, beautifully animated with sound effects and music and everything in your ears. And you're in this, it's like virtual reality almost if you get into it that way. Right. So if you, but you have to keep glancing at your lines and, and you know, if you can memorize them real quick and just do it, that's better because you can just get more into the scene. But so much of that world is created for you. You know what I mean? So it's, it's really, right, it's really right. kind of cool. It's really kind of fun that, so it's a very unique uh, job because it's an improv exercise on the one hand and it's just a one-off you got to go and create something and, and get it right as soon as you can and at the other end of the spectrum it's got that whole world creative so I like both of those aspects of it there it's very odd and you're not involved in the post of it later but when we did the when the pandemic hit if I can segue to that yeah um, I was halfway through recording gentle criminal for my hero when the pandemic shut everything down for the first time three years ago Three years ago this month, we were recording. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
three episodes. <laughs> I had six episodes to record. I recorded three of them in, in Fort Worth. And then they told me, whoops, you're not, we're shutting the studio down. I was like, okay, what are we going to do? So Funimation had to really step up and they did. They, they said, how do we keep this going with no one coming into the studio? We got to keep everything running. Every voice that you hear on every character in every anime for a couple of years, everybody, it was from somebody else's, somebody's closet at their house. Somebody's <laughs> home studio, closet, bathroom, wherever they were recording. They sent out, if, if the actors didn't have setups, I was lucky that I edit video and I have, I have Adobe Premiere and I've got it all set. I have a mic and I've got all my stuff set up. They, were, they just said, use your setup and we'll do it. We'll hook you up. We'll go through a little tutorial. We'll make sure it works. And then you, and then you were actually part of the post process. Speaking of post pro, you were part of it because you were going, okay, hold on. Let me start my mic. Let me do that. Cause you were kind of engineering your end of it. Right. To make sure your equipment was working and then you would record the line and then you record a bunch of lines and then you'd send them to Funimation. Then they would put them into place and they really had to scramble to make that work. And Sentai did it, did it their own way. They made that people, most people came in, they did some remote stuff, but most people came in and they just had to super clean the studios and, and ventilate the, the booths right after a session and wow. wait a while before somebody else went in. And they just <laughs> they followed certain protocols to make sure that, you know, everything was on the up and up and everything was safe for everybody. Um, but that opened up all new doors because then we, oh, why remote recording works. We can actually record anime from wherever. Isn't that interesting? So I think they were able to then cast different people from different places. But now that we're back in the studio for the most part, and we're not doing a lot of remote recording, I mean, some is still remote recording, but, and I, it depends on the show. It depends on the, who, where the person lives, who's cast. It depends on all kinds of factors, right? But now we're back in and uh, recording in person. Um, now we need to go in more often because I think a lot of the engineers had to find those different settings for everybody's different. Right, right. You know, they had to make it sound uniform and make it work. Oh my gosh. For all of yeah. those different. For every, yes. I mean, whether you were the lead role or whether you were. Wow. The lead role, the crowd. I mean, it was like everybody recorded from separate places. Goodness gracious. So I'm, yeah. I'm chuckling at um, having to record in a closet because I have puppy dogs at home and every once in a while they'll <laughs> sound their alarms. Um, yeah. So I have had to record a couple <laughs> things in my closet so I can empathize with that frustration. But to think like maybe one person's closet is not as quiet as another person's <laughs> closet. <laughs> <laughs> to think right. of all the different settings for that. Yeah. So I'm sure would, people are very happy. With, yeah. And the engineers would work with you on it. They would say, okay, let's hear how it sounds. Okay. I'm getting a little bit of bouncing off these of the well, okay you put a pillow up there okay let's try this right try hang an extra coat or a blanket or a towel or whatever and it was everybody was doing their thing that's so creative the creativity Crazy. to bring some of these things to life is always so admirable yeah um and yeah. i think that i have found a whole new <laughs> love for I, I will be very honest and confess to this, please. I'm so sorry. I have had moments where I said, you know, that season of My Hero Academia just is not <laughs> my favorite. And I don't understand it. And it doesn't make sense to me. But when you told this story, I said, oh, my gosh. I have a whole new appreciation for this because I was able to reconnect for a second and go, wait, time out. It's not just people working to bring this together. No, this is people working oh, yeah. and bringing this anime to life. So I've had moments where I said, I really should go back and watch it again and kind of appreciate it for more than just on a surface level for what it is. So right I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm, I'm so glad that you were able to clarify that because I was Believe this me, whole John, time. <laughs> John, uh, let me tell Don't you. Don't throw me under the bus, DJ, no. I, no. I can tell you, she came in, we were going to, we know what we're doing in the episode. She came in that is it no i am not watching this anymore okay all right don't worry it's okay it had nothing to do with gentle it's just fine oh look i, I hear all kinds of stories about I, I hear all kinds of things about gentle uh not getting a lot of love on the internet and and so i hear that from some people and then i hear the opposite from some people and i get it i mean 
if I can, that's, this is a good way to segue into talking about him, if you don't mind. Because, um, <laughs> Please. We, and we talked about this at Anime Weekend, and I might sound like a broken record if people have heard me talk about this before. Uh-oh, it's, Michael says, I'm guilty of that too, my best. <laughs> yes, oh, both no. of them. Both of so, them were on that train. They were right. <laughs> Okay, so what happened? What happened was you, in season four? You had, you had, um, you had this big intense arc with Overhaul and Airy, and and it was very. Was, you were about to go into Hawks and Endeavor and stuff like that, and in between that, it's suddenly like goofy character time. Like, who are these goofy, silly characters on YouTube <clears throat> pouring tea and stuff like that? And I get it. I get why people were like, "This is—is is this filler? Is this just weird? Why are they? They're not very threatening." Gentleman Labrava, what's going on? <laughs> so I understand, I understand what's what's up with that. But if you let the story go for a while, and if you allow the arc to kind of continue, you see some deep, much deeper stuff. And that's why I like the character so much because it's he's my favorite because he's very three dimensional and he's very he's comic relief, but he's also very serious and he's got a very sad backstory. <clears throat> and Labrava has a very sad backstory too. She oh, almost tragic, gave up. yes, right, right very tragic. So gentle to me. What, when I started to get into it, I started to tell people more about this side of it and to think of it this way. It's not a coincidence that he's on YouTube. He's on social media, right? He, and what I mean by that is that he uh, failed. He failed so much in life and didn't feel like he could do, he could ever become a hero. Then he tried to be a hero in real life and he injured somebody. Then his family kicked him out when he needed them the most. When So he had no support. Everybody was against him. Then he felt forgotten. So failure, 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 failure. So he just never felt like he ever succeeded in life. So eventually, what does he do? He says, he thinks to himself, I can't make my mark on the world or give anything special to the world unless I'm somebody else. Wow. That's heavy. Okay? Uh, that's, that's yeah. Like deep. Okay. And I'm going to use social media to convince people that I'm somebody else. Ding, ding. Okay. How many people do you know who get on social media and think, this is who I really am? I'm not this sad. Like, Look, my life is an unending parade of joy and, and I never have a bad day. And some people do that. And some people, uh, we're very weird. We're very strangely wired by social media. Okay? I don't mean to get on a soapbox about it, but you're absolutely but, correct. But we're really wired to think. And some people are wired to think, like gentle thought, unless I'm popular on the internet, I'm a loser. My popularity on the internet is a measure of my self-worth as a person. And if I think I'm talented or not, if I think I can do anything with my life or not, if I don't get likes, if I don't go viral, I'm nobody. And I call BS on that because you're, I tell people all the time, you're, you don't sink into that. And I think it's a huge lesson of the show. And I try to use that to, to his story to try to illustrate that. Your internet popularity has nothing to do with your self-worth as a person. So don't conflate the two things. If you're an artist, if you're a voice actor, if you're a lawyer, if you're a clam digger, I don't care what you are, um, you've got something that only you know how to do, and you can't escape who you are. Don't run from who you are. Just keep plugging away as the person who you are, and you can get a second chance, and you can keep trying again. Don't think you have to be somebody else. There's a lot of lessons in there. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I, I, try, to, I try to tell people that side of it. It's like, if you look at that, it's... It's there. It's in the story. You really, really, truly do. And I think yes. that made me want to revisit the character again because I just, <laughs> when you described it that way, it was a whole other concept that I didn't even take the opportunity to grasp. I was just mm. so on board with like, mm. what is going on here? I don't understand this. So right. hearing that perspective right. really kind of reopened my eyes to the entire mm -hmm. arc and almost all of the other characters. I kind of wanted to take a second look at and go, wait, hang on. These people are so much deeper than just what I'm seeing here. They're so a lot, they're a lot like you. They're a lot like every, just about everybody. They share a lot of, of, you know, I don't know anybody whose life uh, doesn't include some regrets or some, I wish I were somebody else sometimes, or definitely with this persona, you know, so that I could <laughs> go back and fix this or make people think I'm this instead. That's universal. Right. Right. You know? Right. 
what are you talking about? I only have great days. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> On Friday nights, I get to anime no. and no, nothing no, bad no, no. ever happens here. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to say nothing. <laughs> no, we've had, we have had our fair share of oopses on our show. And, uh, <laughs> that is so great that you highlight that. I really, I would like to clip that and maybe share that with our all on our social media because it's such cool. wise, inspiring words. I'm sorry for um, disliking your character, but to be fair, I was a little younger when that season and dropped so i really didn't see the deeper meaning michael that is really cool many you're in good company <laughs> right right and i love i really did it Thanks open my eyes that, and i appreciate it very thankful that you were able to um rewire that part of my interpretation both of both of them i'm glad both of Big them are time. now yes I, I was hearing it from both ends i was like <laughs> oh my god Okay. <laughs> Tell Oops. me how you really feel. <laughs> hey man, you can bring on that bring, you know, haters, I got I get that, la la la, whatever. Okay. You don't right. Have to yes. Fortunately, you don't have to that is not your only thing on your IMDb, right? You've got so many other things sure, going yeah. on. Like you don't get to let that <laughs> hurt your feelings too much. I think it's very I think it's very, very interesting that people would give like aggressive hate toward a character who is just like harmless. Like right. You're yes. wasting my time. Why are you harmless? Why are you nice? Right. That's, we don't need to be going that direction. We do not need right. to be going that direction. You handle it so well because it just seems like it's something like you've just had to tolerate over and over again. I think that speaking about social media, you know, not everybody is going to like everything that you do. So the fact no. that you can kind of go, well, I'm sorry, you don't have to like it. But the fact is X, Y, Z and the way that you laid out so plainly. So it kind of is a full circle moment for your character and for you and this whole redemption arc. I mean, not that you needed redeeming because I think it's fabulous one way or another, but oh, the yeah. way that you're able to encourage other people to take a second look at Gentle and his entire and La Brava's story yeah, um, yeah, sure. really is fascinating. And I'm glad that you were able to share that with us. So. Cool. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> Glad we were able to get everybody on the same right. page with it again. <laughs> so with all of the fun voice acting that you've been doing for anime, uh, as I was looking through your different credits, you also have some video game credits in there as well. So yeah, how does voice acting for a video game different from an anime? Uh, when you're recording a video game, at least the ones that I've recorded, there's no sense of a story. There was no sense of a story at all. You're just jumping around going, uh, 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 okay. Now try this. You fell down and broke your knee. Uh, okay, good. Now let's go to the, I mean, it's just, it was just all over the place. When we recorded, uh, when we were, that might be different for other, you know, voice actors. If you play a lead in a video game, you probably got a little more story to go by, of course. But I mean, right. if you're doing one of these characters, if it's just a fighting game, you're just doing phrases, you know, because like, huh. we were, yeah, <laughs> we were, yeah. Even when we were, <laughs> yeah, Gentle and La Brava were uh, were in My Heroes One Justice Two or something like that. It's a video game, really cool video game. They had the cool fight moves and everything. Yeah, and and yeah, I remember recording it. It was just this two words, phrases, three words, just in a big row. And I'm right. just going, more and more. Yes, take that. <laughs> you know, just the, that's all we were, that's all we did. So video game recording is very, it feels very much more uh, distant from a, from a story and a through line. Right. And I'm, and I'm lucky enough that I don't record some of the uh, louder, screamier roles in video games because those can really, I've heard from, from my friends in the industry, it's not something you want to get into for too long. Oh that gosh! Your, unless you've got some real good throat control or can yell without hurting your throat. It's a skill. That I, I would have. think so. Yeah. Right. You probably yes. have to fine yeah. to that over time. It's not something you just develop overnight. All right. right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's so something that you mentioned earlier about having to go into the studio when you're recording a show. Uh, and you said it was almost like an improv moment. My brain immediately thought of you having to look at the character. And if they're running, you probably have to match some of those sounds too. So in a video game, you probably don't have a lot of that going on with it. But trying right. to parallel, you know, a okay, my character's running. They're probably out of breath now. They're probably going to take a deep breath mm -hmm. in this section mm -hmm. here. So that's cool to kind of really sit down and think of the parallel between the two and then the polar opposites between them. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, I like that. I never sat down and thought about, oh my gosh, they have to voice all of the different things like the actions going through it or their exhaustion. That's so different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people, 
sometimes people with have to run, they run in the studio, they run in place, they get out of breath, they do the arm gestures. And sometimes I do. And sometimes I don't, it depends, it depends on, it depends on the day, really. Sometimes I go in there and I can just sit down and I can literally, if I can get the right sound and I can just think about it in a certain way and let the anime kind of carry me, so to speak, then I don't have to do the gestures. And other times it helps to do the gestures and it, it just, it just depends. Yeah. Very cool. So I had the opportunity to speak to, um, let's see, Samantha Kelly, um, a couple other voice actors I interviewed. And they said they had this one thing, like a wooden horse or something that you would lean on whenever you have to exert your voice. Really? I can't think of it was a pole or something, but whenever somebody got punched, the purpose of this <laughs> equipment was that you could like force yourself onto it wow, and it would okay. kind of help gust out some air, some gusto Sound. in it. Mm, right. I have not, I have not experienced the horse. I have not done the I don't I could be calling it the wrong thing, but the way that they had they sound they called it or just something. Okay. But it was a, an equipment and that's what it was for. And then there's okay. even moments where actors have had to say so, so a lazy character and in the anime they're laying down so they're oh, recording yeah. laying down to get the laziness sound in wow. their voice your body mind everything is just on chill right. mode i guess you got to get really into it really right thinking about all the different ways that we talked about how do you prepare see the characters and all i could think was man what kind of job would that be to be like okay well your character's really lazy so you get to pop a squat here all day <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you just get just to to hang that, out. Yeah, right, that's, right. That's really strange, yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> Very cool. So we were talking earlier about you got certain characters that you, you know either you playing the bad guy. So is there any type of character that you have not voiced it that you would like to? A specific character or a type of character? Type of character. Let's yeah. do type let's do character? type. Gosh, um, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, I always like trying, I don't know if this answers your question or not, but I always like, tr I always go into the studio hoping that the character doesn't sound, I don't do another character that sounds too much like my regular voice because it's nice not to be recognized. It's nice to have such variety and kind of, you know, aim for, uh, I mean, I'm never going to get there. I'm never going to be completely where people can't go, okay, I spotted you in these two. This sounds like this and this guy sounds like that guy. Yeah, I could show you five characters that sound exactly alike. They're the, they're, the, they're the same type, but they look so different on screen as anime characters that it kind of masks that, right? But the voice sounds kind of the same. Um, I wouldn't mind recording. I've done a couple of lead roles uh my first one was area 88 i was a photographer i was like a war photographer Ooh. and and then another one was Udawari romono uh which we called ray romano underwater okay and, uh, <laughs> that was that was a really weird character and that sounded exact that sounded exactly like me and so and i thought he was kind of too plain sounding and i thought man it's not I would love to be able to record uh, uh, more characters that are like Mihawk, that are like more action, action uh, packed roles, more, uh, more badass roles. Okay. Uh, I, I enjoy, I enjoy doing the kinds of roles like the role I'm playing in buddy daddies is really interesting right now because he's such a bad guy and he's very psychotic and, and just down there. And it's, it's the, the roles that are least like me that I can still pull off. Okay. I like I like that. I like I like doing those leaning things. more towards like <laughs> good heroic guy, or do you think you could just be that villain that's villains hiding in the fun. shadows? No, the or the dad. Yeah. <laughs> or a dad. <laughs> or a dad. <laughs> played a dad. Um, let's see. Played a few dads. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it's, I hope that answers your question. But I mean, I I I I'd like to play. I, villains are really fun. Villains are fun to play. Because you've got to find something about the villain. They're an acting challenge because you got to find something that you like about them. When you play a villain, you have to think that you're doing Try. the right thing. You don't think I'm just evil for no reason. That doesn't work. That nobody's evil for no reason. You're you're it's there's a reason, and you got to find what it is, and you've got to believe ah, in it. Okay. Ooh, never saw really it that way. I am doing the correct thing here. You just don't understand me. Right. Yeah, nobody wakes up in the morning and just says, I'll just have evil for dinner, you know. Oh, evil for dinner. No I don't know. I've had my days. I've had my days. Right. Right on. One of those people that don't talk to me before I've had my coffee. Yeah, okay. there you go. There you go. 
<laughs> so all of these fun characters that you have voiced and become and had to get into their mental space, which yeah. of these characters would you like to spend the day with and why? Boy. Just go through the Rolodex. Guys, <laughs> One of the tougher ones. Either you talk to Takanuchi or Mihawk or whoever whoever's gonna protect me from uh Whoever's gonna, you know, all the all the evil uh, all the evil stuff that's out there. Yeah, like you're my bodyguard. I'll hang with you. You're my bodyguard. Right. Yeah. I'll that's a good one. I like that. I'll bring food. Good. I'll bribe you. you know, like, I'll bribe you with <laughs> cookies. Yeah. We'll, you know, take some stuff. Take goods. You know? It'll be a cool date. It'll be a cool date. Just let's I'll, go. Let's yeah, go. I'll hold, your, I'll hold the coffee cup, man. There <laughs> we go. See? Just be your servant. <laughs> oh my Gentle God. Gentle would do that. Gentle yeah, would yeah, absolutely be down for that. Exactly right. Yeah. Shine your shoes, man. <laughs> so, you know, we got all these cons, and obviously, it's all fans from any kind of anime. Can you tell us about, you know, a memory that just that one sticks out the most from oh, yeah. a fan encounter? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. There was a guy. I think I talked about this in Pasadena, but there was you a You did. Was a and I was yeah, really hoping yeah, that yeah. you would tell the story again this for us. This guy came up to me one time about, about in 2017, I think it was at an anime fusion and in, in, um, in Minnesota. And a guy came up to me and he was talking to me about, I said, well, what do you do? He says, well, I, I like to write. I like to write science fiction. I was like, oh, that's cool. He said, yeah, I was thinking about writing a book or a series. I really have this idea for a book series. And I don't know. I don't know if I want to do it. And I said, man, do it. You got to do it. Just don't, just, just don't even question it. Just jump in, just do it. And I don't know how many other people encouraged him uh, or, or what happened before that or after that. But the last time I was in Anime Fusion, the, the, I was a, a few it wasn't anime fusion again. It was some other con. He came up to me again and he handed me four books that he had printed. <laughs> and written. And he said, these are my books. Remember when you told me to write those, you said I should write them. Well, here's my books. I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? There we go. Anime fusion last year. And he said, one of them's getting optioned by a studio might become a movie. I'm like, are you nuts? And so he said, he said, look what you did, man. That's fantastic. And he said, well, if it becomes an anime, you have to do a role in it. I'm like, absolutely. Just call me up. I'll, I'll be there, man. Absolutely. Oh but my that was, that's, God. That was my, that's my favorite story. That's, that's super awesome. I love, you know, telling people, you know, do what you do, what you want to do. That's a great story. I was really <laughs> hoping that you would share that one with us. It was yeah, so I inspiring. Love, and hearing I, it the, for the first time, I was like, oh, my gosh, what an impact that must have had on you as a person to go like, I, well, I you know, encourage again, this. I don't, know, I don't know what he did. I don't know if he went home and other people were saying, yeah, that's true. Do it. And he got more encouragement or something probably, you know, and he, it's, it's, it's like, but yes, it's, it's always a, it's always really, really awesome when, uh, when you uh, might have had some kind of influence on making somebody feel, OK, I can get past this hump. And I, in my mind, and I can just, you know, I said, if you don't do it, you're going to regret that you didn't do it. You're always going to wonder about it. So wonder about right. it. Get into it. Right. You know you want to do it. So just who cares? Run it up the flagpole and see who salutes it. Just see you who's know. nice. And just to think that all of this is from the anime universe. It's just like we, he got the inspiration. Let's just say if, if you didn't exist, okay, Witty, he had done the book. So you always got to think about stuff like that. Wow. That's why I always tell people, encourage man. people because you just don't know, never know. No, you never you, know. you, never you know. gave him that push, that extra, maybe that, that one more push, then boom, he got going and then he came back with books. Here you go. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Shh. Never know. He's so much happier that he wrote those. I mean, if he hadn't written them, it's like he's he's got to be a happier guy. Oh, he right. You wanted to do, you know, you got to do more of what you want to do. But that's impact that you gave him. See, that is that's always going to last for him and you. That's a memory that will be going on and on forever because right on. that where it's where it started. So yeah, oh, big uh, big ups. Oh yeah. Great. Huge, huge life experiences. And speaking of life experiences, uh -oh. here on the Anime and Chill podcast, we are fans of Funko Pops. <laughs> oh. You, Mr. John Grimian, have your own Funko Pop. Oh. Look at it. <laughs> that must have been a fantastic experience.
experience for you. Well, Tell us all about that and then where people can get some. Okay. Well, the, the Funko Pop, that's a two, it's a two pack gentle and Brava that came out. Um, gosh, like six months ago or something like that. Very new pop. I think they've been discontinued. I don't think they're making any more of them. I think it was a hot topic exclusive. They Ooh. sold it only through hot topic. They premiered them at anime expo and it was a hot topic exclusive. And I, and I, from what I understand, I, if I'm right about this, they're not making any more of them for Hot Topic. It's a limited inventory. You can still get them on the Funko app, right? There's actually a Funko app. Right. And and I think you can go look it up there and you can buy it. I think they're like, I'm not sure what they cost. but And then I've got some, when I go to conventions, I bring some at my table uh, if people want to get them there. Uh, I don't. You know, you, you got to buy at your own risk if you go to things like eBay and uh, and other places. Of course, like yeah. I don't think that anybody's making any fake ones of that one. I haven't from my sources, my my Funko collector sources tell me, and I've made a couple of friends who are real collectors because uh, I was interested in it because I heard I saw a video one day. I popped, I ran across it. This guy was showing you different comparisons of the real versus the fake and what you can tell and the colors are different and this and this and that. And there's tons of fake fun. Wow. Out. Okay. So if, you, if you go to, if you go to uh, Amazon or I don't know if it's on Amazon, but if you go to eBay and it's, it's, it looks like it's coming from China and it's way cheaper than the retail price. Enter at your own risk. You don't know what you're getting. You always know what you're getting. That's what I've been told. So, wow. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of interesting. No, it, it's great. Uh, Funkos are, Funkos are so cool and, and they're, they're cute and people like them and their collectors go nuts for them. There's a yeah. whole world of collectors out there. Whole they're world of Funkos. We're guilty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping if one day, if Mihawk gets a Funko, I'll be, I'll be a happy camper. That was wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. There we yeah, go. He hasn't <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's coming it's oh, coming yeah. give it oh, time sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. with yeah. the resurgence that one piece has had in the most recent years <sighs> yes. i wouldn't be surprised if it's you coming know, I, I, and i think that that happened because of the lockdown i think people said well here's a show i can watch for 27 weeks i can sit here and just you know people started to get, get into it. the longest running anime ever yeah they're still making it's them sure you want to know a funny story so sure, this past summer uh dj and i were going to subject ourselves to the one piece summer challenge and our goal was to watch as many episodes no. of one piece in a three-month time frame uh go ahead and ask me how many episodes i I watched how many episodes did you watch four John, four <laughs> that's the best answer ever. <laughs> i after hearing the setup I, 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 I just kept scrolling. I was like, "Oh my god, how many, how many episodes?" I said, like, "Oh, you know what, Abby? Throw in the white towel." <laughs> we were bad. really pushing hard for this. We were trying Train to get other people it. in we on were... this. We were all gonna sail the seas together, and then that <laughs> ship did not sail. <laughs> okay, that's great. So uh, I'm willing to bet uh, we were at yeah. Connecticut. We were in Connecticut at Connecticut. I was doing a panel with. Kyle Phillips and Mike McFarland, who have written, who have like, I think Kyle's written some scripts, translated some One Piece scripts. They've both directed, and Mike McFarland knows everything about it, and I don't know nothing. So I'm, I'm sitting there going, because I play Mihawk. Mihawk shows up every 18 months and goes, hello, I'm a badass, goodbye. And then he takes off, and that's all he does. So I'm not, I'm not up on the, and I don't have time to watch the whole show. So there's so much of it I don't know, I'm not aware of. So I felt like the little, ah, uh, don't call on me for any answer. And <laughs> they were asking, uh, they asked Mike, they asked Mike, what do you think the one piece is? And Mike said, I think the one piece is they're going to open this little, this little beautiful chest and see a red button. And they're going to hit the red button and the whole series starts all over again. Like, no, no, oh no, 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 no. Could you imagine? It's like a Russian doll episode or something. Like, oh, oh my God, God. no. All the fans would just lose their minds yeah, no, no, collectively. No, no. <laughs> no, actually, I actually... I've heard rumors that the One Piece is supposed to be something pretty amazing. Ooh. Uh, but who knows what that might be? And I'm not, right. I'm not an authority on it. So, you know. Uh, neither are we. So yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Good. Michael says, I mean, he literally trained the future best swordsman of the world. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and I hope they have a rematch. I mean, I think they're going to have a rematch. And if people ask me what the rematch is going to be, I have no idea, of course, because I don't know what the I'm not up on the manga and I and I don't uh, and I don't know. You know, I don't have any trade secrets for anybody. But what I would like to see is Zoro and Mihawk have a rematch. Of course, I think that's inevitable. And I think what's going to happen if I if I get my way, what's going to happen is that at some point, Zoro will get the better of Mihawk in a certain moment, have the opportunity to kill him if he wants to, and he just marks him like he marked him, and they call it a draw. Ooh, let's go. Oh, draw. <laughs> That's what I want. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, you heard it first. <laughs> We're going to will it into existence. Yes, 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 yes. We're going to have a big respect, and then One Piece is going to end with a dance party, and that's it. Fantastic. <laughs> On a ship, they're all going to party off, yeah, tra- sail off into the sunset. <laughs> it, is, it is amazing how somebody, you know, this is totally not, not off topic, but um, someone who normally does not watch anime, I have to give a special shout out to my girlfriend's daughter, Annabelle. She, I look. Did not know a single thing about anime whatsoever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I hear the theme song from Demon Slayer and she's watching it. <laughs> she is now she's like asking me about other kind of animes and everything. So uh the big shout has out. Been planted. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Whole world's about to change. Cause I'm like, I said, like, oh, you are only just like inch, just barely tippy toeing into this world. But honestly, puts a smile on my face because she's watching it and she's watching it in Japanese. She's like full blown going for it. So a uh, big shout out to her, by the way. Yeah. And uh, keep watching anime. It is amazing. As you can see from John, all the voices he, he plays. Mm-hmm. So uh, amazing character. So keep on watching. <laughs> very very good okay so um let's just open the floor up to you so you're talking about all these conventions that you've gone to where are mm-hmm. you going next well let's see uh if you go I, and i've got a website that uh, just john that you can go to and i've on the, on the main page i keep it updated about upcoming conventions and stuff like that there's a couple that aren't on there yet because we haven't nailed it down yet i'm just trying still trying to work it out but let's see, April is pretty big. Next weekend, I go to North Carolina for something called Triad Con Ooh. in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Um, two weeks after that, I'm going to be in um, Jacksonville, Florida at something called Bold City Con at a place called Toontown for two days, that's Saturday and Sunday. And then the weekend after that, I'm in Utah, in Sandy, Utah for Anime, Anime Town, Utah. Wow. So that's April. April is big. February was really big. I had three cons and then and then uh, April is pretty big. Uh, let's see. There's other things coming up too. Delta H con in July. Uh, yeah. Ooh, you know what? Let me just let me just peek at my cheat sheet and I'll see what's going on here. Uh, there sure. we go. Yeah. Let's that we see. get the word out where you're gonna pop up, John. There oh, we go. Okay. okay, there's there's something called Gamers and Geeks Con, which is June 18th and 19th in Mobile, Alabama. Black Hills Con in South Rapid City, South Dakota. That is June 23rd through 25th. And then we said Delta H. And so far, that's what the future holds. We're, and we're going to probably, I'm sure we'll have some more stuff coming up uh, by the end of the year. And we'll see what's happening. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just post it up there. Nice. That is so yeah. much fun all over the place. And that's fantastic because that's just here in these United States, right? You have oh, fans yeah. worldwide. Have you ever that's, gone I've out never, of the country? I've never gone out of the country. The only the only convention I've ever been to, I kind of crashed it. I kind of found out they were there was one when I went to Vancouver with my folks, and uh, we were in Vancouver. It was beautiful, and they had um, they had a con up there. What was it called? Anime Revolution, I think, was Anime Revo for Anime Revolution in in uh, in Vancouver. And I went there, and then I ended up filming stuff. I was on Anime Unlocked a long time ago, and so I just kind of did a roving reporter thing, and started talking to people and put it up on Unlocked or my or my social media. And uh, so that's it. I've not been invited overseas. I've not been invited to uh, yet to other cons. I would love to go yet. to the be super Yet. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> If a, if a Mihawk Funko comes out, I'm probably flying somewhere. It else. will. Yes. We're going to speak it that yeah, way. So, <laughs> so good. We'll, we'll, we'll put that out there. So let's see. What else? Oh, and if you go to my website, there's a link at the very bottom 
uh, of the page. It's like a thing you can either scan or with your phone or click on. It's a QR code. That takes you to all my so different social media. So there's a TikTok and an Instagram and a this and that. I'm not on Twitter. I got off Twitter after a while. I got a little got a little tired of Twitter. I got to admit to you, it's 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 good for advertising what you're doing and kind of getting clicks, but it just turned into a bit of a situation. Yeah, it can scary. be. Yes, Twitter is scary. Yeah, scary. It can be a little scary. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, you know. Facebook at least says the other way around. They go, "Hi, welcome to Facebook. Who do you want to be friends with?" Twitter goes, "Here, I'm going to throw you into the ocean, and here's a whack a mole thing." And you just <laughs> yes, start whacking who you don't that want. That exactly. Be. Whoever you don't like comes up to your rap, and you kick them off. You just right. kick them off. <laughs> you got to you got to go the opposite direction on Twitter. <laughs> Um, that is so funny that you say that. I am very scared of Twitter. Um, but you are on Instagram and TikTok as well, and yeah. you make these super fun videos with a plush oh, gentle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here he goes. Hold on. Ah, I can't wait to see. Okay, this this guy right here. He's so cute. <laughs> this guy, this is a gentle plushie that someone made for me. A fan came up to me at my hero con in Irving, Texas, a while back and gave every Every, almost every actor, a plushie. There were 27 of us or something like that. And most of us wow. got homemade plushies of our characters from this fan. And and so shout out to them. They're incredible. They're, they're, there's an Instagram post, I'm sure, that that has uh, that has us like, you know, uh, high five in each other or something like that. And she was just uh, she was just so cool and very sweet. And she gave everybody these. She put a lot of work into them. And I so, can yeah, tell. I was, I was messing around on Sunday and I went up to David Matranga and I said, you know, because he plays Todoroki. And I said, would you heat up my tea for me, please? It goes cold. And he put his hand <laughs> on the thing to like heat it up. And so, I, you know, you put it on. You never know what people are going to like. But yeah, that, that kind of took off. <laughs> it did. They're so yeah. fun. I really enjoy all of them. They're so creative. And I think that's part of the fun of social media. Sometimes yeah. you can just let your yeah. creativity flow. And um, it's probably fun to revisit gentle in so many more gentle settings. And you can have a little bit more fun with that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, totally. Make, <laughs> make stupid little movies with your friends and people will people will enjoy them right yes you just never know where it goes you just never yes <laughs> nice 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 so do we got any my hero academia spoilers or anything okay well if if people who are watching don't want to hear what what is going on in the manga if you just follow the anime then plug your ears so we're giving you like a, we'll give you like a three two one okay. right so anybody out there let's say this again anybody out there who's following my hero academia and the anime and you are not up on the manga we can if if you like i will say what i know to have happen something's going to happen in the manga in the future and then it will happen in the anime later but if people don't want to hear it three two one gentle and the brava make a reappearance which is super cool. I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know if they just came back to say hi, we're here to help out a little bit. But I've always I've always thought, you know, this is a good they need a redemption arc. They need to come back and help. Needless to say, a lot of people are coming back and helping in in strange and odd ways, and I think it's awesome. So that's that. So uh, you know, maybe they'll maybe they'll come up with a little suicide squad kind of a thing where some of the Ooh. villains I, I would like that a lot. Maybe not. Who knows? If, I mean, there's so much going on in that show, and there's so much, and I don't know if it's going to be just a season seven or if they're going to have a season eight anime before the thing is all over. I don't know if 24 more episodes in a season seven are going to complete the story or not. Uh, some people think maybe. Some people think it'll take an eighth season. Don't know. Ooh, okay. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. So just only time. Given the fact that there are already some spin-off mangas, you know, one's called what is it? Is it My Hero Vigilantes or something like that? I think that sounds yeah. familiar. Manga, new stories, you know, it'll never end. Why, why, would, it? why would it? It'll exactly. be the new one piece, right? Yeah. 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 Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so fun well uh, at the end of every show dj has two special bonus questions that uh -oh. we don't always list okay. they're very fun so dj okay. will let you take those away okay okay so you can invite five dinner guests from the entire anime universe you can pick any character you want so five dinner guests and what's for dinner that's the first question so go ahead so i'm making dinner 
You, or you can do takeout, you either take or. Out or. We're going to do DoorDash because I don't cook. All right. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it weird that I played for Chef Chappelle? Right. <laughs> well, he might be a good person to invite. To invite. Okay, okay, good, good. <laughs> Chef Chappelle, if he behaves himself, can, can show up. And as long as he's not too rude, he can cook. So that's number one. All okay. Right. I'm inviting... So I'm not going to do characters I played. I'm going to keep this more interesting. I'm going to invite Miss Joke from my hero. Okay. Because Miss Joke is a waifu. I'm telling you. You give me. I'm sorry. Honestly, though. Strong, Honestly. Strong, strong woman with a sense of humor. I'm there. I'm loving it. Okay. Bingo. Hey, okay, great company. Like yes, great company. Have, making people laugh. That's number two. Man, y'all are putting me through my paces. Who am I going to invite? Uh, I'm going to invite. Doggone it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Gotta keep you on your toes. Who's, who's cool in like in like Sailor Moon or or like who's a who's a cool character from let's let's go old school. Uh let's see. I'll invite um the uh, uh couple of the night sabers from, from Bubblegum Crisis 2040. They can they can have some food with us. All, All right. right. So three. Oh my god, I gotta come up with two more. Two um, more. Two more. Okay, John, come on. Uh Luffy's there. Let's have Luffy come. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Luffy can come sit at the table. And and finally, I'm I'm sure there are people out there screaming, Why are my favorite characters? Why don't you know any more anime? <laughs> Right, but to sit down and have dinner with them, it's a totally different spin. You know, you can name all the people all day long, but someone that you want to spend time with and have a meal with, it's a little Who's different. Who's the lead character in Demon Slayer? Tanjiro? Yeah, get him there. Ooh. Cool. 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 That would make for good conversation. Good conversation. conversation. Okay, got it. Bingo. There we go. <laughs> okay, what's for dinner? What's for dinner? Yes. Yeah. What are you ordering from oh, DoorDash? Oh, 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 we're gonna do from Food Wars. It's like a stuffed quail. It's a risotto stuffed quail. Oh. Ooh. Okay. I'm a sucker for risotto anything. There so that sounds go. really good. There we go. Doing that. Doing that. Okay, okay. Okay. Now, what is this I, other question? All right. Second question. There's a billboard out to the world. Okay. What's your message to the world? Oh my God, what's my message to the world? Don't be rude. <gasps> Love that. Bingo. It be is gentle. It is that simple, and people, it flies over their head. It is so be, simple. Be cool. Just be <laughs> cool. Take a breath and be cool. <laughs> be that on a shirt. Be fine. You'll be fine. Take a breath. Be cool. Breath, be cool. Yeah. That's a little bit like what's that British phrase? It's like keep calm and something. Keep calm. Carry, carry on. on. Keep yeah. Calm, carry on. Okay. Take a breath and be cool. Take That's a breath. Be cool. Way more American though. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Very good. Oh my god. Oh my god. Great, uh, guys. This has been super fun. John, Thank you so pleasure. much for spending time with us. We really appreciate yes. it. You're very welcome. And make sure to email me an address that I can send Michael uh, one, of these, one of these Mihawk prints. In fact, okay, tell you what. Do, if you want to look at the prints again, um, you can go to my website and I've got a store and and I can and I and people can always go to the store by the way and and tell me which print they want. They can buy them online. I sign them. I mail them to you. So tell me which one Michael wants and I'm just going to send it. Okay. Wow. I am jealous, Michael. You look at that. You, go pick what you go pick the print that you want. John is going to sign it and send it. So. Sh Right on, man. <laughs> I appreciate that, John. Thank I appreciate you. that so much. Like, you have no idea. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, we have been looking forward to this. My God, as soon as Abby told me, I'm like, really? let's go. Awesome. I was so ready for this. So, uh, right. appreciate so you, John. How often, how often do you guys uh, do you guys have this podcast up? And, and when's your next one? And 
uh, bi-weekly. We, go, we do it bi-weekly. So we try to do it every, what, first and third? The first uh, and first. third Friday of every month. We post okay. pills last week until this week. Um, and then we're always more than willing to talk to anyone. One of our goals, and I will just put this out there, yeah. for 2023 was to begin interviewing more voice actors. So you are our first voice actor for our Great. podcast. Excellent. So it is an honor to have you on here. Thank yes. you so much Excellent. for doing this for That's us. Great. Oh, fantastic. I love Thank it. Definitely. I love it. Right. And as a sign off, something that we always do for our show, we always want to send out lots of love to our anime community. So, John, if you would join us in sending out some love to our anime community, we always like to wish everyone lots of peace, love, and anime. Anime. That's anime. the anime. That's, the, that's our slogan. That's, it. that's, that's slogan. all we do. Peace, anime. love, and anime. Right. Right. Cool. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us tonight on the Anime Chill Podcast. It was wonderful to have Mr. John Gremion on. You can find all of his social media linked in all of the descriptions below. John, thank you again for being on with us tonight. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Peace out, everybody. Everybody in the chat, you guys were amazing. Michael, pff, bro, you're the star of tonight. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Bye. Bye.